Right now at 6, Providence nurses counting down the days to what could be the largest nurses strike in Oregon history. I can tell you that not a single one of them want to go on strike. Meanwhile, staff at OHSU already worried about a mega merger, now brace for pink slips. Plus, the search for a driver who apparently shot at traffic cameras and put neighborhoods at risk. One errant round can cause tragedy. And sharpening their skills before the season heats up. I mean, it's just great to have more knowledge. How urban fire crews are now preparing to fight wildfire. Good evening, everyone. We want to get right to some tragic and difficult breaking news because in the last few minutes, we have learned that an American astronaut has died in a small plane crash in Puget Sound. Bill Anders was a crew member on the 1966 Apollo 8 mission and was among the first three people to orbit the moon. He is credited with this, the iconic Earthrise photo from that mission. Absolutely majestic there. The plane crashed just before noon off Orcas Island. That's about 80 miles north of Seattle. Some witnesses say they started recording video when they saw the aircraft doing maneuvers. A warning, we are going to show you a portion of the video here, though we will pause it before the moment of impact. It may still be difficult to watch. You can see the plane taking a nose dive here straight toward the water. After impact, we can tell you it appeared to bounce off the surface and catch fire. According to witnesses, the aircraft looked like it was from the World War II era, and some say it appears the pilot Anders was trying to pull off a dive bomb maneuver. No one else was on board. The NTSB will investigate what went wrong here. Bill Anders was a retired major general and was 90 years old. His son Greg telling the AP, the Associated Press, quote, he was a great pilot and we will miss him terribly. All right, to more breaking news now with thousands of nurses at six Providence hospitals in Oregon giving notice they plan to walk off the job as soon as June 18th. And if they follow through, it's set to be the largest nurses strike in Oregon history. Let's get right to Catherine Cook in the newsroom with details on what we are hearing from nurses and Providence. Catherine. Well, David, at this point, this follows eight months of negotiations between Providence and the Oregon no Nurses Association. The strike would impact six hospitals, Providence St. Vincent, Newburgh, Willamette Falls, Milwaukee, Hood River, and Medford. The three-day strike is set to begin June 18th at 6 a.m. That's when 3,000 nurses are expected to walk off the job. Nurses are asking for more money, a better nurse-to-patient ratio, and better health benefits. During a news conference today, ONA members said they don't take their decision to strike lightly. It remains our hope that Providence will agree to the fair contract that we deserve. Going on strike is a last resort, but we will not accept a bad deal simply uh, that simply allows Providence to continue with the dangerous and unsustainable status quo. Providence tells us they will not return to the bargaining table until after the strike is over. Providence Chief Executive Jennifer Burroughs says they've hired replacement workers to care for patients during the strike. It's really important to me as a registered nurse that the public know that we are here for them. And I don't want people feeling like they need to not seek care if they've got uh, an emergency situation. Providence tells us if ONA withdraws their strike notice, they will continue negotiations. Again, nurses are prepared to strike June 18th, beginning at 6 a.m. David. Catherine Cook in the newsroom. Thank you, Catherine. Well, looming layoffs at OHSU top our other headlines this evening. The hospital just notified employees 500 people will be getting pink slips sometime this summer. This comes a week after OHSU announced a binding merger with Legacy Health. Hospital administrators say the cuts are needed because costs for salaries and supplies are outpacing revenue. They're calling the changes a, quote, strategic realignment at the state's largest hospital. No word on the exact timing of the cuts or which departments will be hit hardest. A man is recovering after he fell over a retaining wall and 70 feet down a steep slope in southwest Portland last night. He was able to call 911, but first responders had trouble finding him in the thick brush between southwest Terwilliger and Barber Boulevard. Crews cut through the brush with a chainsaw and rigged up a rope system to pull him up. The hour-long effort took some 15 firefighters in all. No word on the extent of his injuries. 
And a health alert continues to expand now with shellfish harvesting now closed along the entire Oregon and Washington coastlines. Oregon agriculture officials say a biotoxin is affecting razor clams, bay clams and mussels in the Pacific Northwest. The toxin has made at least 20 people sick with paralytic shellfish poisoning. Crab harvesting remains open, but officials are cautioning people to gut crabs before cooking them. Matt. OK, David, thanks very much. What a beautiful day all around the state coast, valleys, Cascades, Gorge everywhere, including the reserve golf course sunshine and in the mid 80s, 86 degrees. Humidity still low at 29%. Just a beautiful, beautiful day all around the region. Now, as we look at the high temperatures today, we topped out at 86, so we're not going to do 90, nor will we in the days ahead for the week ahead anyway, as temperatures begin to cool off just a bit. But we had a couple of 90s around the state. That's pretty much it for the 90s for a while. The Grand Floral Parade is in Portland tomorrow. Begins at 10 a.m. and we will have picture perfect weather. I'll call it mostly sunny, but there'll be some scattered high clouds moving over. Could actually be a benefit and that may keep the sun off uh, parade spectators a little bit more. Temperature about 68 degrees at the parade start at 10 a.m. 73 at the parade finish around noon. So again, if, if it doesn't rain on the Grand Floral Parade, that's a good day, but this one's going to be especially great. So great weather for the parade, slight cooling this weekend. And then we got to concern ourselves with showers potentially for Father's Day weekend next weekend. We'll touch on that later, David. Right now, picture perfect sounds great. Thanks, Matt. Developing in Portland, police are looking for a person who shot and damaged city property at least seven times over the last two weeks. At least one of those shootings was caught on surveillance camera. Ashley Grams is live at that spot where the video was recorded in southeast Portland. And Ashley, it sounds like this guy was aiming at traffic cameras. It does, and it happened at this intersection, Southeast 103rd and Washington. The driver pulled off right here on the side of the road, got out of the car, and then fired three shots. If you're driving around near Mall 205, you might notice these cameras sitting near intersections. There's one at Southeast 103rd and Washington. Lights flash when the camera captures a car speeding or going through a red light. Oh, oh. They got somebody. <laughs> it happened when we talked with Nick McCullough, who lives in the area. I think the, uh, the traffic in the Portland metro area was insane. But in this case, Portland police aren't after a driver for disobeying traffic laws. Take a look at this video. You'll see a car pull over on the side of the road. The driver gets out and points a gun at what looks to be the intersection safety camera. That is premeditated insanity. He fires three shots before driving off. That's pretty aggressive. And that's probably somebody who got a ticket because of that and is a little bit angry. <laughs> now all three panels of glass are shattered. Where he's firing a gun in our, our community, in our neighborhoods. Um, and, you know, one errant round can cause tragedy. Sergeant Kevin Allen says the suspect has fired shots at city equipment at least seven times in the past two weeks. People were hearing the shots fired. Um, they were concerned. Somebody's shooting in my neighborhood. So that's the kind of thing that, you know, really concerns us as well. The police department has yet to confirm the man was shooting at cameras, but they are hoping someone will recognize him or his car. We do think it's a, a Subaru WRX, uh, kind of a sportier car, has a hood scoop. Um, it has uh, air deflectors on the doors uh, over the top of the windows. Now there are about a dozen of these cameras around the city. Again, they capture drivers who might be running a red light or speeding. Now there is one about a block over at 102nd and Stark. We noticed that one is also damaged, but police haven't uh, confirmed if they're both connected. If you know anything, contact Portland Police. David. Thank you, Ashley. We're learning more this evening about controversial pro-Palestinian teaching guides posted by the Portland Teachers Union, which some Jewish leaders and parents are calling anti-Semitic. Thomas Schultz has been following developments here. Thomas, it appears some of that material is still available. What's going on here? Yeah, well, David, the teaching guides were moved to a more discreet location on the Teachers Union website after some were removed Tuesday. And the material is color-coded based on the level of caution teachers should use before teaching the curriculum, some of which Jewish leaders call hateful and it's just totally inappropriate. For days, the Portland Teachers Union has received backlash for these teaching guides. Some categorized Israel as an apartheid regime. 
Other sources argue Hamas's October 7th invasion of Israel was not surprising and was provoked by Israeli aggression. Tuesday, Union President Angela Bonilla told KGW some material had been taken down for review, though Friday, much remained. You would hope that teachers would actually be teaching from multiple fact-based perspectives. There are links to material with both Palestinian and Israeli viewpoints, though Jewish teachers say much of the content is unacceptable. I'm angry and I feel betrayed. David Goldstein teaches at Robert Gray Middle School. He worries teaching guides could lead to a rise in anti-Semitism. I believe that this behavior by our union leadership um, really creates a, an intimidating and threatening environment for Jewish students. We reached out to the teachers union for an interview. We never heard back. Though on Tuesday, in a statement, Bania told us they're committed to social justice and keeping schools free of Islamophobia and anti-Semitism. Though to some, these guides continue to do the opposite. You can't be opposed to anti-Semitism and at the same time putting out hateful propaganda. I don't accept this behavior from my leadership. And David Goldstein, that teacher you just saw, says some teachers may actually leave the union because the Portland Association of Teachers just doesn't represent their interest anymore. David. Thanks, Thomas. Appreciate the follow up there. Straight ahead at six on this Friday as the weather heats up, how crews that are used to fighting fires in the city are now being trained to tackle wildfires and coming up at 630. More bad news for Oregon's local news landscape. One big company was just sold. Another is up for sale. Pat and team are going to explain what happens next. That's ahead at 630 on the story only here on KGW.